This is the Singer 66, and I wanted to show you how I thread it, and then I'll show you some quilting. Um, what makes it unusual is the way I thread it uh, up at the top, which isn't really part of the thread path. The uh, thread I use is mainly one of these big cones, and it's up on a thread stand. Uh, and So the thread goes up to the top, and you can't see it in the frame, but then it comes down to here, and I need to keep it on here some way. A lot of people will thread through a bobbin and sit that on top of the thread pin, and uh, that works pretty good, but I find that it needs more tension on that uh, opening, because it's, what it's used to is having a big spool on there that it has to pull to make it uh, pull across to the rest of the machine. So. The thread would be very taut between this pin and this hook. So what I've got here is a bent paper clip that I've shoved into that hole, and the thread is actually wrapped around that once, and then it goes around the thread pin too, and that creates a little bit of extra tension on there, more than I would get from a bobbin. And the reason that I do that is because it helps to keep, if there's not enough tension here, I get little loops that form in here and come through and end up at the needle, these little twisted bits. They'll sort of end up, and I don't know if you can see that, but you see how that thread kind of twists up? Those little twists happen along here if there's not enough tension. And they end up going all the way to the needle, and that's when the thread starts to shred up. Uh, so extra tension up here not here at the tension disc is what will help to uh, create a smoother uh, operation and the machine won't shred. So the thread goes from there through this guide here down to the tension discs and it's going to go around and they, uh, it's got to get under that uh, end of that check spring so that that is operational. Now, when you're doing normal stitching on a 66, the thread just goes under that hook there. But there's a hole in it, and for free motion quilting, I thread through that hole instead of under. And then up to the take-up lever, and then through this hook here, loop around this uh, thread guide here, and then uh, through the needle, and I usually have to lick my thread because it starts to fray, especially when I've been playing with it like that. And so that's the that's the top threading. Here's a wound bobbin, and uh, this goes in here. The thread should be coming off the back of the bobbin when you put it in there, not the front. So the, the thread's coming off the back side, and it goes in there. There's a little hook, a little guide that it goes through there, and then it comes up to that second one. And make sure it's seated in that. There is a lever that will pop that bobbin up and out, too. The other thing is, make sure that this screw and the one next to it aren't loose. After you do a lot of quilting and it, or sewing and it starts jiggling, sometimes those screws come loose and it starts to make weird sounds. That's usually why it's that those are loose. Anyway, then you're going to slide the shut. There's a little hole or a section in there for that thread to ride through. And now, uh, picking a quilting foot. Uh, oh, also I have my uh, my stitch uh, or my feed dogs. They're up. You, you can't lower them on this machine, but I have the stitch length as short as I can get it so that it, they don't move back and forth much. This is a uh, an old vintage Singer foot that I love, uh, but they're hard to find, and if you can find them, they're expensive. You might pay $60, $70 for one of those. They also come with a plate with a, a feed dog cover, which I have, but I don't use. So that's one, if you can find it, they work great on this machine. And by the way, these are all for not 
the old Singer 66 that had the back clamping feet. These are for side clamping. What I prefer, uh, if I have, if the, uh, the, if you have the option and you have an old back clamping uh, machine, the the best thing to do is to replace that presser bar with a new, with a more uh, with a side clamper. Uh, they do sell adapters that uh, screw on uh, to the old one and make it work, but they're kind of thick and it makes it harder to fit the feet on. So they work, but they're not perfect. Anyway. This one's a side clamper. So this is a good option. <clears throat> I like this kind, which you will see sold and called a darning foot. Um, it, uh, this lever goes over the needle bar and it kind of rides up and down as the stitches happen. Uh, and it works really well. Uh, I use it all the time, um, but I wanted to show you this one, and this is a generic, inexpensive uh, quilting foot. Just look for one that says side clamping, uh, low shank, and it'll fit this. Uh, what I did is I bent this bar up. This is the bar that goes over the needle clamp and makes this go up and down. So by bending it up, it doesn't go up and down anymore. It's just going to sort of sit on the fabric. Uh, and uh, what, why I like this one is there's a big opening and I can see what I'm doing better on this than any others. So that's the one I'm going to use today. Uh, I like the open foot. They make these also with a closed uh, foot and uh, I just prefer the open one. So we're ready to... I like to just get this thread up and out of the hole there. I'm still going to have to bring it up to the top when I get over here. So, let's see if this will show in the, uh, in the camera here. Uh, I think it does. I'm trying to get my lighting correct and it's always difficult. So, I've marked a big uh, feather. Here's the, here's the one that I already did. And uh, I've marked the other one. And it's a continuous uh, line, and I marked it for consistency. This is going to be a handbag, and I've, I've marked a dot on each of these uh, feathers where the um, handle will go, and this feather has to curve around that. So that's why I marked them. I, can, I usually just do them without doing any marking at all, but I marked them in this case, and I used a wash away uh, blue uh, marking pen. Uh, this one is Mark Be Gone and it comes out with water. So I'll rinse this whole thing when I'm done and then throw it in the dryer. I've done uh, this with, uh, this is white denim. Uh, I've spray basted it lightly onto the batting and I've used a cotton quilt fabric for the backing. Uh, you can certainly use muslin or whatever it is that you uh, want to use. And, <coughs> and I don't know if this is gonna show let me sort of zoom out a little bit. Well, that's as far as it's going to go. Um, there we go. So do you see how this is one continuous feather? And that means that these uh, little lobes are going to have to change direction so that I can end at both ends. So I start in the middle and go around and then track back and go back up. And that way I get them both directions. So somewhere in the middle of this sort of big S-shaped feather is where I'm going to start. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If, you're, if your goal is perfection, you're going to have a lot of disappointment. At least that's what I think. So I've brought up my thread from the bottom. And uh, this is a 40 weight um, trilobal uh, polyester thread. It's really meant for embroidery, but it works beautifully for this. And uh, this is a 9014 needle, nothing special. It's a basic um, standard universal 9014. I really prefer a Microtex needle, but I've broken all of mine, so I'm down to the plain ones. So anyway, 
I'm going to start treadling to make this work and uh, show you what I'm doing. So the first thing is just a basic uh, loop and then start making a series following that blue line. And if you miss the line, no one will know because you're going to wash it out. So don't get too worked up over that. I don't know if you can see as you're, as uh, as this is going that that foot is not hopping up and down. Um, it works fine if it hops up and down, but it makes me kind of dizzy to watch it. That that jumping motion it just kind of drives me crazy. So I find it works just as well to just let it more hover over the fabric. And uh, now depending on what I'm quilting, I may need more or less pressure on that foot. And if I do, then I adjust this top screw. So right now I have it cr clamped uh, down almost as far as it goes. But if I had something thicker that I was working on, I wouldn't want as much pressure on it. I'd loosen this up. So play with it until you, you get to a point where you're getting the stitches and the movement that you want. I think a lot of people get so worked up about not being able to free motion quilt because they can't on their old machine, their old treadles, because they can't lower the feed dogs and they need to do that, but you really don't. The thing that makes a lot of the old machines difficult to deal with isn't the feed dogs, it's that you can't find a foot that works. A lot of the older machines, the, the non-singers, just have weird uh, attachments that do not uh, correlate to a modern uh, foot. They never had a quilting foot or a darning foot. So they're more difficult. I've got a, a white, a couple of white sewing machines that have that sort of different system and um, I will do another video on how to deal with those soon. I think I've got that worked out pretty well now. Anyway, so we're using this blue line as a guide but not following it exactly because I'm adjusting as I go. But and if it makes you more comfortable, what you can do is, is uh, draw the whole thing out. And now I've finished, I'm going to go back to the beginning. So I'm going to just circle back around. By the way, it may be hard to tell in the picture on the camera, but this is a tan thread. Okay, so now I'm back to where I started, and I'm going to work my way back up again. I could do both sides of the feather at once, but I find that it's easier if I if I do it this way. Uh, it's just, for me, they, they turn out better this way. If I get, if I do both sides at once, I tend to make them a little too matchy, and it doesn't look as graceful, I don't think. It looks more formula. I like to I like to have it look a little more spontaneous. So. The lobes on one side of the feather may not match exactly the ones on the other. And uh, if I do them together, 
side by side. That tends to be how they end up. And I, I like them better this way. A lot of people find that wearing quilting gloves or a lot of people use gardening gloves which have rubber uh, fingertips uh, that they help that helps them get a better grip on the fabric and makes the cool thing go better. If that's the case for you, feel free to use them. I have gotten to the point where I prefer not to. Uh, but if I'm working on a really big piece, a full-size quilt, sometimes I need that extra grip to slide the thing around because a great big full-size quilt, you've got a lot of fabric to move and there's a lot of weight to it, so sometimes that's helpful. Now I'm going to swirl back around again to the beginning and do the other end. And it's the same thing. Go from the top down and then back up and then back down. So find it. I put it as a, here it is. That's what I've taken out of the uh, machine in the last couple of weeks. So this is what builds up in there constantly as you're sewing. And that's part of the thread and it's part of the fabric and uh, this builds up in there uh, continuously. So it is important to uh, Keep your machine cleaned out and uh, 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 it makes it run so much better when all that stuff isn't in there coming up the works. 
Now yours, yours may not get as cruddy as what I just showed you uh, in a couple of weeks because you're not necessarily going to be sowing as frequently as I am. Um, and it depends on the thread you use also. Um, cotton thread is going to make more lint than poly. Fuzzy fabric is going to make more lint in your machine than totally smooth. Uh, so, a lot of it depends on what you're doing. But, it is always a good idea to keep your machine well maintained. You'll get better stitches, you'll get better results, you won't break your thread as much. You won't get tangles as much. You won't get skipped stitches. So keeping it cleaned out is important. So you can see, so that's the end of this this one here. Now you can see this is what I was doing in the background is all this uh, uh, pebble stitching. And that is very easy to do, but time consuming. So, I got a couple of hours worth of this to do to fill up the whole background. And uh, that'll take some time. So, I will sign out for now. And happy quilting.